War, in its brutal nature, has always unleashed innovative and often terrifying methods of combat. The Vietnam War was no exception. Delving into some of the most horrifying traps used during this conflict, this video will shed light on the gruesome tactics that marked this chapter in history. Number 1. Punji Stakes the Punji Stakes stand as one of the most notorious traps that were used extensively by the Viet Cong guerrillas during the Vietnam War. These were not just simple stakes. They were meticulously crafted instruments of harm. Made primarily from bamboo, these stakes were sharpened to a point and then hardened by fire, ensuring that they were not only lethal, but could also pierce through any protective gear with ease. What made these stakes even more dangerous was the use of toxic substances to coat them. In many instances, the Viet Cong would smear the tips with animal feces, poisonous substances, or even venom. This was done to ensure that even if the wound itself wasn't fatal, the resultant infections would debilitate the soldier, reducing the enemy's manpower and morale. The placement of these stakes was strategic. They were typically positioned in pits, camouflage to blend in with the natural surroundings. This made them hard to detect. When a soldier stepped onto such a trap, they would inadvertently push their foot through, impaling themselves on the stake. These traps were not only physical threats but psychological ones as well. The fear of stepping onto an unseen pit, especially in the dense jungles of Vietnam, was real and palpable. Historically, the use of punji stakes can be traced back to earlier guerrilla warfare tactics in various parts of the world. Yet, it was in the Vietnam War that they gained notoriety. The guerrillas would set them up around their camps or along known routes of the American and South Vietnamese troops. Such was their effectiveness that soldiers had to be trained specifically to detect and avoid them. Special boots were also developed, though they offered limited protection against a well-placed punji trap. While the physical damage caused by the punji stakes was severe, it was the psychological impact that had lasting effects. Knowing that at any step, a soldier could fall victim to such a crude yet effective weapon made patrols nerve-wracking. This, in turn, played into the hands of the Viet Cong, who capitalized on the fear and trepidation of the enemy troops. The punji stakes, though simple in design, were a grim reminder of the lengths to which warfare could go, turning nature itself into a weapon. Number two, bamboo whips. Bamboo, due to its versatility and abundance in Vietnam, became an integral tool in the creation of many guerrilla traps. Among these traps, the bamboo whip distinguished itself as a particularly terrifying instrument. Its mechanics, though seemingly straightforward, held a lethal efficiency that resonated with the guerrilla warfare tactics of the Viet Cong. Crafted with a simple yet ingenious design, the bamboo whip functioned much like a typical whip, but with a deadly twist. A strong, flexible bamboo shoot was bent over and held under tension by a tripwire. Hidden amidst the thick underbrush or along the narrow jungle paths, this trap awaited an unsuspecting foot or hand to brush against its wire. Once triggered, the bamboo shoot would snap upright with violent force, striking anything or anyone in its path. To further enhance its lethal nature, the tip of the bamboo was often adorned with sharp objects or barbs. The resulting injuries varied from painful lashes to deep, tearing gashes that could easily incapacitate a soldier. The simplicity of the bamboo whip's mechanism was part of its brilliance. It required minimal materials and could be set up rapidly, allowing the Viet Cong to create multiple traps in a short span. Moreover, since it was made primarily from natural materials, it blended seamlessly with the environment, making detection incredibly challenging. Soldiers recount harrowing experiences of walking through seemingly serene patches of jungle, only to be suddenly and violently struck by these bamboo devices. The unpredictability of these traps created an atmosphere of constant vigilance and tension. No step was safe, and every brush against a leaf or vine could lead to a whip's swift and painful retaliation. In a war characterized by advanced weaponry and machinery, the bamboo whip stood as a testament to the effectiveness of simple natural traps. The Viet Cong's adeptness at harnessing the raw materials around them transformed the very landscape into a minefield of hazards. The bamboo whip, with its silent weight and brutal execution, symbolized the guerrilla warfare's essence, unpredictable, resourceful, and ruthlessly effective. Number 3. Bouncing Bettys 
While the Vietnam War was marked by an extensive use of indigenous materials for traps, there were also instances where more sophisticated devices made their mark. The Bouncing Betty, though not unique to this war, was one such device that instilled a distinct sense of fear among troops. Its unpredictable nature and devastating impact made it a formidable weapon in the Viet Cong's arsenal. This airborne detonation was what made Bouncing Betty's particularly horrifying. While a standard landmine explosion might be somewhat mitigated by the ground or absorbed by the legs of the victim, a Bouncing Betty aimed for the torso and head, the most vulnerable parts of a human body. The radial spread of the shrapnel ensured that not just the individual who triggered the mine was harmed, but also those around them. The effects of a bouncing Betty detonation were ghastly. The mine was designed to maim rather than kill. The high-velocity shrapnel would tear through flesh and bone with ease, leading to severe injuries. Troops in the vicinity of a detonation often suffered from shrapnel wounds, even if they weren't the ones to trigger the mine. Such wounds were not only physically debilitating, but also presented a risk of secondary infections in the humid conditions of Vietnam. Beyond the immediate physical damage, the psychological toll of these mines was immense. The unpredictability of when and where one might go off, combined with the knowledge of its devastating effects, created an environment of perpetual anxiety. Troops had to be constantly wary of every step, knowing that beneath the benign surface could lie a device waiting to unleash chaos. In the aftermath of detonations, medical units were often confronted with the grim task of treating complex shrapnel wounds. The injuries inflicted by bouncing Bettys were notoriously difficult to treat due to the nature and spread of the shrapnel. Moreover, the sight of such injuries had a profound impact on the morale of fellow soldiers. Bouncing Bettys were a cruel reminder of war's indiscriminate nature. In a landscape already fraught with danger, these mines added another layer of dread, reinforcing the idea that danger lurked not just in the enemy's guns, but also beneath the very ground trodden upon. Number four, booby-trapped tunnels. Tunnels, with their dark and labyrinthine nature, hold an inherent sense of mystery and foreboding. During the Vietnam War, the Viet Cong leveraged this to create a network of tunnels that not only served as hideouts and supply routes, but also as deadly traps for unsuspecting American and South Vietnamese forces. The construction and design of these tunnels were meticulously planned. Spanning several levels and sometimes extending for miles, they incorporated living quarters, storage areas, weapon caches, and even makeshift hospitals. The narrowness of the tunnels, often just wide enough for a single person to crawl through, was deliberate. This design made it extremely challenging for larger-built Western soldiers to navigate them. But the intricacies of the tunnel system went beyond its narrow confines. The Viet Cong ingeniously integrated various booby traps into the tunnel design. These included pitfall traps with punji stakes at the bottom, swinging bamboo traps similar to the aforementioned bamboo whips, and even concealed grenade traps that would detonate upon any disturbance. The air inside the tunnels was often stale and suffocating, further complicating matters for those who dared to venture inside. Some sections of these tunnels were deliberately flooded, while others were designed to be submerged during high tide, adding another layer of peril for intruders. Ventilation holes cleverly concealed above ground provided minimal air, but also served as potential shooting points for the Viet Cong. The dangers of these booby-trapped tunnels were numerous. Beyond the immediate threat of traps, there was also the risk of getting lost in the extensive maze. With multiple entry and exit points, a soldier could easily become disoriented, making them an easy target for lurking Viet Cong fighters. The claustrophobic environment, coupled with the darkness, intensified the psychological stress, leading to panic in some instances. Historical encounters with these tunnels are replete with tales of close calls and tragedies. Operation Crimp in 1966, for example, saw Australian and American forces discovering a massive tunnel complex in the Hobo Woods, northwest of Saigon. As troops tried to clear the tunnels, they faced not only booby traps, but also fierce resistance from Viet Cong soldiers concealed within. The booby-trapped tunnels of the Vietnam War epitomized the asymmetrical nature of the conflict. They showcased how the Viet Cong, with limited resources, could effectively counter the technological superiority of their adversaries. Each tunnel told a tale of ingenuity, resistance, 
and the lengths to which humans could go when defending their homeland. Number 5. Tripwire Grenades The battlefields of Vietnam, laden with traps and snares, were a testament to the Viet Cong's capacity to turn the landscape into an adversary. Among these myriad hazards, tripwire grenades stood out for their deadly simplicity and efficiency, reinforcing the constant state of alert required by troops in the region. The setup, though rudimentary, was effective for several reasons. First, the wire, often crafted to be nearly invisible, was challenging to detect, especially under the dim canopy of the Vietnam jungles. Second, these grenades could be rigged in various configurations, a single grenade for a targeted blast, or multiple grenades to magnify the devastation. The resultant damages from tripwire grenades were manifold. The immediate explosion could result in fatalities or severe injuries to anyone within its blast radius. Shrapnel from the grenade added an additional layer of danger, as these fast-moving fragments could cause secondary injuries, penetrating armor and flesh alike. Even if soldiers were beyond the direct impact zone, the shock waves could lead to concussions or other internal injuries. Beyond the physical harm, the psychological effects of these traps were profound. The randomness of their placement and the unpredictability of their detonation created a climate of constant trepidation. Soldiers had to be meticulous with every step, aware that even the slightest misstep could trigger a deadly explosion. The very knowledge that an unseen, inanimate object could wreak such havoc added to the war's stress and strain. Furthermore, tripwire grenades disrupted troop movements and logistics. They slowed down patrols as soldiers had to proceed with heightened caution, scanning for potential wires. Moreover, when a grenade was triggered, not only did it cause immediate harm, but it also signaled to the Viet Cong the position and movement of enemy forces. This dual function, direct harm and indirect intelligence, made them a favored choice for the guerrilla fighters. The tripwire grenades of the Vietnam War symbolized the broader nature of the conflict. In a terrain where visibility was limited and dangers lurked at every corner, the simplest of devices could become the most potent weapon. Through ingenuity and adaptation, the Viet Cong managed to turn a handheld weapon into an omnipresent threat, reminding their adversaries that in guerrilla warfare, the environment itself was an ever-present foe. Number 6. Crossbow Traps Crossbows, ancient weapons with a history stretching back over two millennia, found a renewed and deadly purpose during the Vietnam War. While they might seem rudimentary compared to the more modern armaments of the 20th century, in the hands of the Viet Cong, these devices became another tool of terror and destruction, adding to the myriad of booby traps that plagued the jungles of Vietnam. A tripwire was integrated into the mechanism. When an unsuspecting individual triggered this wire, usually by walking into it, the crossbow would release its tension, firing the projectile with considerable force. The direction and height at which the crossbow was set up varied, aiming to either wound or kill the target based on the intended strategy of the trappers. The lethality of crossbow traps was pronounced. The projectiles, often poisoned or smeared with human feces to increase the chances of infection, were designed to penetrate deep into flesh, causing grievous wounds. The sheer kinetic force of the projectile, combined with its pointed design, meant that it could pierce through protective gear with relative ease. Instances of deployment were, unfortunately, numerous. The Viet Cong strategically placed these traps around areas they deemed of importance, be it their own camps, supply routes, or pathways they believed enemy forces would traverse. The goal was multifaceted, not only to physically harm or kill the enemy, but also to sow fear and hesitation. Soldiers recount instances where they or their comrades were suddenly struck by these hidden crossbows. In some cases, the traps were set up in sequences, so even if one was detected and avoided, another might be lurking just a few steps ahead. This created an atmosphere of constant tension, with every step forward fraught with potential danger. The crossbow traps in their quiet and deadly efficiency encapsulated the nature of the Vietnam War. A melding of ancient designs with the guerrilla tactics of the Viet Cong, they represented the challenge faced by the American and South Vietnamese forces. In a conflict where the enemy was often unseen, hidden behind nature itself, even the shadows held potential threats. 
These traps underlined the reality that in Vietnam, history, terrain, and tactical ingenuity combined to create a formidable and ever-present adversary. Number seven, mace traps. The Vietnam War, with its dense jungles and guerrilla tactics, witnessed the resurrection of many ancient warfare techniques adapted to modern times. Among them, the mace trap stood as a cruel testament to how even primitive designs could be weaponized to create chaos and inflict severe harm. Drawing inspiration from medieval weapons, the mace trap was both a psychological and physical tool of warfare for the Viet Cong. The construction of a mace trap was reminiscent of its historical counterpart, the flail, a weapon composed of a handle and a striking head usually spiked, attached by a chain or rope. However, for the purpose of trapping, this design was adapted and amplified in its lethality. The mace, often made from a heavy material like wood or metal, was embedded with sharp objects such as nails, shards of metal, or glass. This ensured that upon impact, it would not only deliver a crushing blow, but also inflict piercing injuries. The trigger mechanism was typically a tripwire system. The mace was suspended often concealed amidst foliage or in trees, and was connected to a counterweight or pulley system. The tripwire, stretched across a path or entrance when disturbed, would release the mace, causing it to swing down or sideways with tremendous force onto the unsuspecting individual. Another variant was the pathway pendulum. Placed in dense jungle pathways, this trap would see the mace swing from the side, like a pendulum, the effect was particularly horrifying, as soldiers might detect the movement too late, and the lateral swing made it harder to avoid in the narrow confines of a jungle trail. The psychological impact of the mace traps cannot be understated. The fear of sudden violent ambushes from such a primitive yet effective device added to the litany of stresses soldiers faced in Vietnam. The sight of comrades being injured by these traps coupled with the ever-present risk of triggering one, made every step in certain regions a test of nerve. The mace trap was a brutal reminder of the hybrid nature of the Vietnam conflict. It combined ancient warfare designs with modern guerrilla tactics, underscoring the Viet Cong's ability to use every resource, every piece of knowledge, to create an environment of fear and uncertainty for their adversaries. In the unpredictable terrain of Vietnam, the old world and the new merged in a dance of danger and dread. Number eight, snake pits. Nature, in all its splendor and brutality, has often been harnessed as a weapon of war. In the Vietnam conflict, the Viet Cong, in their ever-evolving playbook of guerrilla warfare, turned to one of the oldest fears known to humankind, snakes. The snake pit trap capitalized on the visceral fear these creatures induce, ensuring that even the bravest soldier would be wary of where they set their foot next. The setup of a snake pit was both devious and simple. First, a hole or pit, typically around three to five feet deep, was dug into the ground. The dimensions of the pit could vary, but it was generally large enough to accommodate a human. The sides of the pit were often steep, ensuring that anyone who fell in would have difficulty climbing out quickly. At the bottom of these pits, a collection of live, venomous snakes was placed. These could include cobras, crates, or other venomous species indigenous to the Vietnamese jungles. Over this pit, a fragile cover, often made of leaves, twigs, and other natural materials, was placed to camouflage its presence. To the unsuspecting eye, it looked like any other patch of ground. The trap was often strategically placed along paths or routes that the enemy was likely to traverse. When a soldier stepped onto this camouflage cover, it would give way, plunging them directly into the pit where the agitated snakes awaited. Even if the victim managed to escape the pit swiftly, the chances of multiple snake bites were high. Physically, the impact of falling into such a pit went beyond snake bites. The fall itself could result in injuries, ranging from sprains and fractures to more severe traumas. Additionally, once bitten, the venom could cause a myriad of symptoms such as blurred vision, difficulty breathing, necrosis of the flesh, and systemic organ failure. The snake pit traps of Vietnam symbolized the lengths to which the Viet Cong went to defend their territory, leveraging both the natural environment and deep-seated human fears. They underscored the complexity of the conflict, where dangers lurked not just from the enemy combatants, 
but from the very land itself. In a war where psychological warfare was as pivotal as bullets and bombs, the snake pits stood as harrowing reminders of the treacherous terrain of both the mind and the land. Number 9. Spike Boards Amid the vast array of traps devised during the Vietnam War, the spike board holds a deceptively simple yet profoundly malicious place. Often overshadowed by the more elaborate snares and booby traps, the spike board was, in many ways, the epitome of guerrilla warfare's principle, to create maximum damage with minimal resources. This trap showcased the Viet Cong's ability to turn everyday materials into lethal weapons. The design of a spike board was elementary. It consisted of a wooden board or a flat, rigid surface into which sharp spikes, often made of bamboo, metal, or wood, were affixed. These spikes were sometimes treated with poison or contaminated to ensure that any injury was not just painful, but also potentially life-threatening due to infections or toxins. The board, with its spikes pointing upwards, was then concealed under a thin layer of foliage, dirt, or other natural materials, making it almost indistinguishable from the surrounding terrain. Deployment of spike boards was strategic. They were often placed in locations where they would be least expected. Inside shelters, beneath the mud of rice paddies, along trails, or even in the shallow waters of streams. Essentially, they were set in places where foot traffic, whether by soldiers or local civilians, was anticipated. Soldiers often recounted the horror of witnessing comrades suddenly screaming in pain, only to find their foot impaled on a board. The visual image, coupled with the agonizing pain, had a demoralizing effect on troops. The spike boards, while not as deadly as some of the other traps, played a significant role in the psychological warfare, constantly reminding soldiers of the omnipresent danger lurking beneath their feet. Beyond the physical injuries, there was the added challenge of extracting the foot from the board, which could cause further harm if not done with care. Soldiers had to be trained to not just avoid these traps, but also to assist injured comrades swiftly and efficiently. In the larger context of the Vietnam War, spike boards represented the asymmetric nature of the conflict. The Viet Cong, often lacking in advanced weaponry or resources, turned to the basics, devising traps that were both effective and psychologically tormenting. The spike board, a humble yet horrifying contraption, epitomized this approach, serving as a chilling reminder of the resourcefulness and resilience of the guerrilla fighters. Number 10. Gas Traps The Vietnam War, notorious for its vast array of traps, also bore witness to a sinister evolution in guerrilla warfare. The Use of Gas Traps Though less prevalent than some of the other physical snares, gas traps were emblematic of the war's shifting boundaries, blurring the lines between traditional combat and biochemical warfare. These traps capitalized on the element of surprise, attacking not only the physical body, but also the respiratory and neurological systems of the unsuspecting victim. Tear gas, CS gas. Originally designed for riot control, CS gas causes severe irritation to the eyes, nose, mouth, and lungs. Exposure leads to tearing, coughing, and difficulty breathing. Mustard gas, a vesicant that causes severe chemical burns on the skin and mucous membranes. Inhalation can lead to severe respiratory distress or even death. Homemade poisonous gases, the Viet Cong occasionally used a combination of locally available toxic substances to create gases that could disorient, incapacitate, or in some cases kill. The implementation of gas traps was strategic and devious. Small containers, often made of glass or fragile plastic, were filled with the gas or the chemicals needed to produce it. These containers were then rigged to break upon triggering, releasing the gas into the air. The triggering mechanisms varied. Tripwires were common, but pressure-sensitive platforms or even manual release by hidden Viet Cong fighters were also used. Gas traps were frequently deployed in enclosed spaces such as tunnels, bunkers, or huts to maximize their effectiveness. In these confined areas, the gas could quickly reach concentrated levels, making it even more deadly and giving victims little chance to escape. One harrowing account spoke of a platoon that entered a seemingly abandoned tunnel system. Deep inside, one of the soldiers triggered a gas trap. The confined space and lack of immediate exits meant that the entire platoon was exposed, leading to multiple casualties and a frantic scramble to evacuate the injured from the tunnels. 
Gas traps, while not as numerous as some of the other snares in Vietnam, were a testament to the Viet Cong's adaptability and their willingness to exploit every possible advantage. These traps added another layer of trepidation to an already nerve-wracking environment, a constant reminder to the American and South Vietnamese forces that the enemy was continually evolving, always seeking new ways to maim and kill.